The levels and curves effects can both be found under the color correction category. This one's gonna be just a little bit longer than usual because there's a lot of controls and I really wanna make sure you understand what these effects are doing. Let's start with levels. I'll just apply that to this photo of a forest. And what this effect essentially allows us to do is control the brightness values of this image with a lot of fine control. By default, our channel is set to RGB, which is all of the color values of our image. And this histogram is a visual representation of the brightness values of all the pictures in this layer that we've applied the effect to. On the left side are the darker parts of the image and the right side are the brighter parts of the image. What this histogram is telling us is that there are a lot more dark pixels than there are bright pixels. I can change this channel from RGB to red, green, or blue, or even the alpha channel. So if I switch to the red channel, then we're gonna primarily see the red histogram. But if I click on this, it's going to isolate it to just the red, or the green, or the blue, or whatever we're looking at. Click on it one more time to switch to seeing all three of those channels combined. And I'm gonna go back to the RGB combined histogram. On the left side, we have the input black slider. And you can see as I'm adjusting this, this input black value is moving. So these three arrow sliders, as well as these two down here, are all represented in these five sliders down here. So this first one is input black. As I move it to the right, my image gets darker. So this is taking the darkest parts of the image and making them even darker. And if I grab the opposite slider, the input white, then it's gonna brighten up the image. If I actually duplicate this level's effect, so I have two histograms, it kind of becomes more apparent what's happening. Let's go to the first instance and move the highlights up or the input white up. As soon as I let go, the histogram below it updates because this histogram is now representing the affected version of this histogram. What's happening is it's kind of compressing all of those brightness values the further I drag this slider to the left. So think of this range of values is now being expanded out down here, scaled to the right to fill up that entire range. But also take a look at this right here. These lines on the very right, they're going all the way to the top of the graph, which means I'm clipping off color data. There's a lot of parts of my image that are 100% white that have been blown out and we no longer have data on them. Like this fern right here is just 100% pure white. So if I back this off a little bit, we can see right about here is the sweet spot where I don't clip too much of those highlights. And I could have seen that without this second histogram, just because looking at this first histogram, there's really nothing beyond this point to the right, meaning there's no colors this bright or brighter. So I can compress this down to where that curve starts to pick up without clipping anything significantly. And because there are so many dark pixels over here on the left and they're really pushed up into the left, this is basically telling me that there already are some clipped values or very close to clipped values on the dark end of the color channel. So if I bring this even slightly to the left, I'm clipping all of the color data on the left side of this slider to just be pure black. And if I really crank this up, you can see a ton of my image is now pure black. All right, let's reset that and then take a look at this slider right here, which you can see has just a grayscale gradient on it. If I grab this value right here, this is our output black. As I drag it up, it's making everything washed out. And if we look at the histogram down here, you see that it's literally just sliding or shifting that entire histogram over. And if I do the opposite slider and bring that down, it's making everything darker. You can think of it like this. This little slider triangle is telling this image that the 100% black pixels in this image should be 100% black. And this one is saying the 100% white pixels should be 100% white. As soon as I move this one to the left, those 100% black pixels should now be this gray rather than black. And everything in between it should be scaled or interpolated to match. Same thing for the white slider. If I drag that down, all of the white pixels are now going to be this gray and everything else in between is adjusted proportionately. This is actually exactly the same as if I were to grab a black solid, overlay it on the entire composition, and then just turn the opacity from 0% right here all the way to 100% here. And the opposite is true on this one. A white solid at 0% opacity all the way up to 100% opacity. There's virtually no difference. We can control all of these sliders very precisely down here as well. But what about this slider right here? Well, this is the gamma control. 
And as I increase or decrease this, you can see that it's kind of leaving the black and white values where they are and adjusting those midtones to be brighter or darker. This is the gamma curve. So we have the darkest parts of the image on the left, the brightest parts on the right, and those midtones or the gamma control in the center. I'll reset that. The only other two options are clip to output black and clip to output white, which are defaulted to off for 32 bits per channel color. We could change that to off or on, but this is really more for a 32 bits per channel workflow where you have pixels with luminance values that go above or below pure black or pure white. One last thing about levels is the alpha channel. If we use it on something like my logo, let's bring it out, apply that levels effect and turn off the background just for a second. I'm going to just add a fast box blur to this before the levels and blur it out slightly. So now there are some semi-transparent pixels around the edges. If I go to that alpha channel on the levels effect, I could bring in the input white, bring in the input black, and I'm essentially crushing the alpha channel rather than the color channels. And this is making my overall image much more soft and rounded. All right, I'm going to just get rid of that for now, turn that photo back on, and that's all there is for the levels effect, but I'm going to show you really quickly. There's another effect called levels individual controls, which looks almost identical with the added individual controls for each channel. So if I went into the red channel, I would have red input black, red input white, and so on. And I think the primary benefit of this particular effect is the ability to animate all of these individual controls independently of each other, rather than having a keyframe that drives every part of this effect. Now let's take a look at the curves effect. So I'm gonna type that out and apply it. This effect also controls the brightness values of our image. It just approaches it in a little bit different of a way. Instead of having a graph that goes from left to right representing dark and white, we have it on this two axis graph that has the darkest values on the bottom left and the brightest values on the top right. Again, we start by adjusting all three color channels by default. And if I click and drag on say this top handle and move it to the left, my image is going to get brighter, just like on that levels control. And if I grab this bottom left handle and drag it to the left, we're gonna make the overall image darker. But if I grab that same handle and drag it up, we're going to fade it out, wash it out a lot more. And if I grab that top right handle and drag it down, it's going to fade to black. So those are very similar to the input and output black and white controls for levels. But to get to that center gamma control slider, we basically have to add our own handle to this line. So if I click right here in the middle, and then drag this, the name curves makes a lot more sense now. You can see that we are curving the gamma adjustment between the dark and light values. And I think it's a lot easier to visualize what exactly is happening with that gamma adjustment. So we're saying take these pixels that are existing in the mid tones of our image and drag them up here and then make all these values in between nicely curve off of what that original graph was. So I can make it brighter, I can make it darker, I can adjust it left and right to make that more or less extreme, and I can even add more points. So if I brought this point up here and I dragged this point down here, this is called an S curve, and it basically just increases the contrast and in turn a little bit of saturation. So turning that on and off, you can see the effect that has. If I wanted the overall image brighter, I'll just bring this up kind of proportionately on both of these. Now, as I did that, you can see that my curve is hitting the ceiling of this graph and then flattening out. This is exactly the same as clipping off those brightness values in levels. So if I were to bring this all over to the left and really clip this off, you can see a lot of my values are getting blown out past that pure white point again. So be mindful of that. But I just really like this interactive visual of the actual gamma curve that we can see right here. And just like with levels, we could affect the red, green, blue, and alpha channels all individually as well. So if I went to the red channel, I'm gonna see a red line and I can add points to it. And all of these points work exactly the same. I can add whatever I want and adjust anything to my heart's content. Let's reset that and then take a look at these couple of controls that we have here. First of all, we can change the curve size, which is really great for precision. I can make this ridiculously large. Let's set that back down to where it was. And then over here we have two tools. The default is the curve editor, but we can also do this free form pencil tool. So if I reset this, click on that tool, my handles go away, but now I can just draw a curve in whatever shape I want. And it will just 
basically take this as if I had set up the handles that way. If I click on this curve editor again, it will add points to that curve. But as you can see, it's not very precise. It's definitely not that smooth. And now I have a whole bunch of handles. So I don't use it all that much. I could say smooth and that will help with those points. But generally, I just use the curve editor. So let's reset that. Then we have this button down here that says auto. If I click on that, it takes a second to calculate, but generates a curve that is attempting to balance out my brightness values, making everything a little bit more even than it was originally. And that photo was pretty dark. So it's just brightening up all of those shadows and making the overall image a little bit more balanced. We can also save and open preset curves. So if you were working in Photoshop and you had a specific curves adjustment layer, say, that you wanted to bring into After Effects, you could save it in Photoshop and then open it in After Effects or the other way around. And that's all there is to levels, levels individual controls, and the curves effect. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you want to support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.